word from this video sponsor. Got an idea for a circuit, widget, or device that you want a rapid prototype or sell? Check out JLC PCB. They offer their board manufacturing services starting at two bucks for five boards and only take a few days from start to finish. So make sure to check out JLC PCB. And once again, thanks for making this video possible. Now let's get on with the video. Hey there YouTube, this is SGM4306 back with another project video. This time it's another JLC PCB project. And this is part two of it. I finally got around to finishing this. So you might be asking, what exactly is this? Well, uh, this is my vac pen project. Uh, I'll give you a run around of, uh, not a run around, I'll give you a rundown of, of what exactly uh, all the I.O. are. It's basically this odd shaped thing. And so a lot of my, pre my uh, recent projects, for instance, this project was a nightmare to uh, use little tweezers to hand place, even though I did stencil this and I, um, I reflowed it, so at least I didn't have to solder it by hand. Still placing the parts without disturbing anything to either side and getting the rotation correct and everything, it was kind of a nightmare. This, by the way, is my, um, my WS2812 like serial RGB matrix project. So I figured there had to be a better way of uh, moving parts, manipulating parts without without using tweezers in situations where you just can't get the right angle or the tweezers are just too ham-fisted and messing up kind of every other part on the board. So I, I've been in nightmare situations like that, and I, I've known for quite a while that these little vacuum pen things have existed. And you can buy them, sure, uh, but I wanted to build one. And so in the last part, I demonstrated, I'll just give this a quick pop open, uh, this PCB here. And so I, I designed a little, uh, like a touch sensitive controller that'll be able to turn on and off a pump and a solenoid to, uh, to start sucking and to stop sucking, I guess you could say. Uh, so I finally got around to building an entire little case around it. And here you can see it's a bit how you doing. I just soldered wires to the LEDs, so it's not very elegant. And you might notice I <laughs> used a penny. I just taped a penny to the other side of this cutout here, and that uh, solders to the touchpad. So that's pretty much all I'm doing. And you have a, uh, a jack here on the end, the power switch. So yeah, let's just close this up. This just holds together by friction. Uh, if you want to, you could glue it. But yeah, strictly not necessary. I'm just going to kind of put it like this and uh, so we have our foot switch jack so if you wanted to uh, you could make a simple foot switch out of any like headphone jack it basically just shorts tip to ground so it's only it, you don't need a stereo jack you, you can get away with the mono or stereo uh, but all you need to do is solder a switch between those two and I'm probably going to do that for a future project make my own 3d printed foot switch so you don't have to use your other hand you can use both hands for manipulating the board or the parts or the pen or whatever. So we have two LEDs here. This one uh, basically shows you the state of the pump and the, the touch switch. It's kind of a bit redundant because when the pump's running, you know it's running because you can hear it. This one is a battery indicator slash power indicator. When the battery's good, it's green. When it's starting to get low, it's orange. And when it's low, it's red. And so it's just... A quick way of telling at a glance whether your battery is going to give out or not. Uh, we have the 9 volt input and interesting story I was actually going to design this internal and have like a latch a plastic separate piece that you print and like do all that and then I figured I'm probably going to replace the batteries quite often and or I could design a uh, like a 3d printed fake dummy battery with a DC jack in the end so that you can run this off of, you know, an AC adapter. That's kind of what I'm planning on doing. I'm only going to use batteries just if I'm on the road and I need to play some parts. But yeah, it gives you the option then and just having the prongs out in the open like that is just very convenient to stick a battery or an adapter on there. And we have our main power switch here on, off. We have the vacuum port and this is permanently wired. Though I don't see any reason why you couldn't easily modify this to have like a uh, a little jack that you can disconnect. But yeah, I put a little ballpoint pen spring on there just to uh, to prevent the cable kinking 
so it has a little bit of resistance to that and yeah just some screws this attaches the pump to the body and that's kind of it everything is kind of a bit spaghetti just hanging out floating around inside here so yeah i, I I'd spend a lot of time on the rest of the project. I kind of got fed up by the time I got to the case design. So I just wanted this done because I actually want to use this um, instead of spending five years developing it and then not having something that I can use. Yeah, and that's basically it. The bottom, nothing. Top, nothing. The only thing of note is a little cutout here. And I, uh, I printed this in two colors in one print. I just uh, paused the print at layer six I believe and then I swapped the filament color so that it would show up there and that's a very neat visual indicator I think of uh, that's where you press to make it go and so yeah I'll do a quick demo I already did a demo of this in the previous video so I was thinking about before using uh, one of like these lure lock uh, syringes that I bent over and this is actually a decent diameter but I noticed that this really cuts down on airflow uh, so I think I can get away with using a slightly larger tip that allows more airflow so it can pick up bigger parts uh, a little bit easier so I just have some test parts here that we are going to go and just running off of a, a used battery so this battery isn't you know brand new or anything but yeah let's just kick this on and there are two modes programmed and if you hold the button while you turn it on, the uh, the red light on the left here will start flashing five times, and that shows you that it'll it'll be switching the modes. So the first mode is uh, you just as long as you're holding the switch, it'll activate the vacuum, and when you release, it releases the vacuum. The next mode is you tap once, and then it the vacuum latches on, and then you tap it again, and it'll release. Okay, so I had to solder some of the wires inside. Also, uh, who knew tape wouldn't really hold a penny onto plastic that great? So I used some uh, some like double-sided sticky tape. So hopefully that works a bit better. So yeah, there we go. So yeah, uh, like I said, to switch modes, I forgot I actually changed it. Before I had it so that you could do it. Uh, by holding the touch sensor, I switched it to the foot switch input because uh, sometimes when it boots up, uh, depending on like uh, the electromagnetic field around it, sometimes the touch sensor on boot up it has to recalibrate, so it gets a little confused. So if I tie the the change function to the touch switch, sometimes it's unreliable. So I just did it for the uh, touch switch here. So if you can see, if you turn it on. Uh, it'll start flashing, and then you can release the button or whatever, and then it's, it changes modes. So they should be in toggle mode now, after it stops flashing. Okay, there we go. And there we go. If I wanted to switch it back to momentary, just do the same thing. And then it'll flash. There we go. After five times, that'll switch off, then it'll switch back on. Now it's ready. So there we go. And there, works. I like to leave it on the um, momentary or the toggling latching mode. Because it just makes it a little easier for you to, to pick up parts and then, okay, now I want to release it. There, perfect. And you can see this is about, it's orange, so that means the battery is about 50% or less. I know the battery is a bit, how you doing hanging outside like that? But it makes the case design so much easier. <laughs> Let's pick up some parts. So that was a uh, an LED. Here we have a SAT, a SAT 23. Absolutely no problems. Here we have a larger tantalum. Still pretty easy. Here we have a microchip. This is probably... Uh, what is this, a TQFP, probably like a 44 or something. It's one of the larger uh, microchips. So 
this is probably going to be the limit of what I would pick up without the uh, the rubber tip. The rubber tip makes it a lot easier to pick up larger parts, but it's it basically means you have to remove it to get the smaller parts because it's much larger than the smaller parts. It's hard to see the placement, but let's see if it can pick up this. So yeah, that worked pretty well. Now this switch is really hard to pick up without. I, I can give it a try, but it's probably not going to work. Oh, there we go. So it actually does work. But yeah, like I said, if you just want to stick on the little rubber booty, it makes it so much easier to pick up larger parts. Like that. And you can even go down to tiny little, I think this is a 0603. If you go to an 0402, you actually might run the risk of sucking the part into here. But uh, this pen attachment that I actually got, uh, I believe it was actually for some kind of vacuum gas analyzer that I took apart uh, that I found at a thrift store. This actually has like its own cartridge. Okay, and like I was saying, you can actually unscrew this. And if in, in the in the case that something did get sucked in or dust start starts getting sucked in and it's obstructing it, you can actually remove this and there is a little brush in there so that should have caught anything. You can just kind of tap this out. And yeah, and even there's like a hollow bit here. Yeah, like I said, this originally this was actually a vacuum tool. Uh, I just added all this part on, but it, it's just basically a uh if I were to remove this oh, <laughs> perhaps a bit too much yeah so basically it, it just had that metal bit it didn't have this rubber tubing or anything it just had the metal bit and it was for some kind of gas detection and it had it actually came with the pump that's in here right now and I think it was for it's, something taking analytical samples of some kind of gas something like that maybe like i think it was a leak tester for something i don't know anyway it's it's a vacuum pickup tool now yeah let's just see 0603 there's a cap here and a resistor resistor is easy to do but they're so light that it's still even though the uh the solenoid kicks out to, to release the pressure. It, it still requires a little bit of prodding to get the part off the tip. And there we go. So yeah, if I can just swing this out of the way. Yeah, you can see how, how it's working as the, um, the solenoid actually has like a three-way T-splitter. And so normally the solenoid is closed and the pressure from the vacuum goes straight through to the tip. Uh, however, once it kicks off, it'll actually fire the solenoid to uh, disable the output um, to like release the vacuum there. There is a cutout delay of about a second. So you can't just rapidly press the button. You have to wait a second between driving it so sure how long nine volts are going to last uh, driving this pump but for like vacuum pick in place you should really only be using it in short bursts so like on on off on off as you go to pick and place the parts you're not going to be holding it and like moving it around like a whole bunch so i think the battery should last like a decent number of pickups and holds uh, so anyway yeah um all the design files i'm going to provide on the project page which will be linked down uh, below it'll be on my uh, hackaday.io page so if you want to build your own you're welcome to it uh, i happen to use a pump that i pulled from a previous device you, however you can actually use pretty much any one of these like small vacuum suction pumps uh, you can get this on ebay for like three bucks or something it's pretty cheap and this will fit it won't fit with the current mounting holes so you'll have to figure out your own way how to mount it uh, but yeah, this will work just as fine as the one that I have in here. The only thing was the one that I have, the vertical clearance is a little bit shorter, so it fit in a little better between everything. So that's why I ended up going with this guy. But yeah, I've tested it with this guy and this guy works just fine. Yeah. Um, what I actually might do is, uh, 
I don't think the double stick tape is going to work so great on the uh, between the copper and the plastic either. That's probably just a matter of time before that falls away. And I've already started noticing you need it in close contact. Whatever metal you use in close contact with the surface in order for the touch sensor to really be sensitive enough. So what I'm probably going to do is just epoxy it on there. It's just a penny. I just soldered a wire to it, so nothing special. So I'm just going to epoxy, put a thin layer of epoxy, clamp it together. And then that should make the touch sensitivity much better. Because right now there's a lot of air gaps uh, between the metal and the plastic surface. So it's not quite so sensitive. So I know, yeah, uh, if you guys have any questions or further ideas, maybe 2.0 of this project, uh, what I can improve, uh, put them down below. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.